Hey guys, Flopster here from CarboniteCummins.com. Today we're going to be removing the HVAC box out of a 2008 Dodge Ram 2500. The box is being removed to replace a leaking evaporator core, and while it's out, I'm replacing all five air doors. The recirculation door, both blend doors, and both mode doors with an all-aluminum set from Blend Door USA. Now I'm going to do this without any of that hat job stuff that has you cut apart your HVAC box and then tape it back together. It's really simple to remove. You'll be able to do it in a weekend with some basic hand tools. The prerequisite for this is that since we're disconnecting the HVAC lines, you have to remove all the refrigerant from it. So take it down to a local shop, have them evac the system out. Most of them won't charge you hardly anything to do it. This truck has already been evac and now we're about ready to start the disassembly. So here we go. Start by removing the negative terminal from the battery. If you have a Cummins powered truck, you will need to remove and isolate the negative terminal from both batteries. Disconnect the two AC line plastic clips by depressing the locking tabs. There's one on front and back, and pull it downwards. All right, using a 5 8 inch AC disconnect tool, insert it on the line, pull it forward, and pull the light off. All right, loosen the two bolts that secure the accumulator to the firewall. Give you a little bit of wiggle room in it. Using a three-quarter inch line tool, repeat the process to pull the second line off. After you have the lines disconnected, be sure to cap and cover them with whatever means you have necessary. So I'm using some uh, Ziploc bags and uh, my boss's hair ties. You can use these if you want to. Just tell her I said it's okay and you should have no problems. If you're not replacing the evaporator, if you're going to reuse it, be sure to cap these as well. Since I'm replacing it, I'm not too worried about getting dirt or moisture or anything into it. But you want to keep that out of your system as much as possible. Disconnect both heater core hoses where they meet the heater core at the firewall. Since these are mounted up high, you'll lose a little bit of coolant, but not a whole heck of a lot. I didn't even drain mine. I dropped probably about three or four cups worth. Remove the two nuts that secure the HVAC housing to the firewall. Remove the glove box by squeezing in the sides and rotating it down and simply pull it out. Remove the center console by pulling out the rubber inserts and then removing the two bolts and the one Phillips head screw holding this thing to the floor. Remove the rear half of the center console by pulling upwards and then remove the two newly exposed bolts holding the front half of the center console. Remove the front half of the center console by pulling up on the shifter boot and then sliding the thing back. Remove the shifter by pulling the outer boot up and pulling the inner boot down to expose the two nuts. Take these off. Remove the two bolts that hold the metal support bracket for the instrument panel to the floor. There's one on either side of the center console. Remove both A pillars by popping out the little plastic covers and removing the bolt under each. Once the bolt is out, pull downwards to dislodge it and then pull up and back to get it free. Remove both side covers by starting at the bottom with a trim tool and working your way up around the side. Remove the driver and passenger side lower cowling cover by putting your trim tool underneath of it and releasing the plastic clips all the way frontwards.
disconnect all electrical connectors under the passenger side cowling. Remove the knee guard panel on the driver's side by taking out these two screws here on the bottom and then pulling the panel straight backwards to unlock the little clips. Disconnect the OBD2 port by pushing in the little locking tabs on the side and sliding it up out of its bracket and disconnect the hood release by removing the two screws that hold it to the bracket. Remove the metal plate behind the knee panel by taking out the four screws. After the screws are out, Slide the panel upwards to release the tabs. Disconnect the big electrical connectors behind the parking brake by taking the bolt out of the center of the main one and pulling it off. Then press the locking tabs and take the other ones out. Disconnect the parking brake release rod by rotating this little clip downwards and pulling the rod out. Remove the upper dash cover panel by inserting your trim tool right down the front of it and following it down to disconnect the locking clip. Then pull the dash panel afterwards to disconnect the front locking panel. Remove the two large screws and the four smaller screws that go across the dash. Remove the wiring harness from the plastic clip under the steering column and then remove these four nuts to disconnect the steering column from the bracket above it. And once the steering column is disconnected, lay it down into the seat gently. With the steering column removed, you can now take out these two bolts that were behind the steering column bracket. Remove the three bolts that are on either side of the dash. On the passenger side, the bottom bolt actually comes in from the inside, so you might miss it if you're not looking for it. Disconnect the electrical connector behind both driver and passenger side A pillars, and then disconnect the connector mount to pull it off of the truck. With everything disconnected, it's now time to remove the dash from the truck. Now I've laid a towel over the steering column to prevent any damage from this thing sitting on it. And this part of the job, it's really helpful to have a helper to help you move it out. The dash is kind of heavy and it's pretty big. Pay special attention while doing this for any wires that you might not have disconnected. You don't want anything catching or ripping itself apart while working on it. With the dash pulled back, you can now see the HVAC box. To remove the HVAC box from the truck, we need to remove this electrical connector from the truck because it has to go with the box. You have two nuts 
located the top of the box, one here, one back over there that I can't get on camera. And you have one bolt down here where your center console used to be. So pull him out now. Now to remove the HVAC box from the truck, all you have to do is pull it directly backwards. On my truck, the heater core had melted itself into the insulation, so it was stuck pretty good. So I had to reach behind there and pull it free. But it just comes right out either way.